20 years ago, U.S. and Allied armed forces were in the thick of urban combat as the Iraq War entered its second year. April 2004 saw the first Battle of Fallujah as U.S. Marines sought control after the killing of four American private military contractors. The siege was marked by heavy urban combat and significant resistance from insurgent forces. Growing sectarian tensions, improvised explosive device attacks, and the Abu Ghraib prison scandal plunged Operation Iraqi Freedom into chaos. The, the desire for those who do not want there to be a free and democratic Iraq is to shake our will through acts of violence and terror. It's not only our will, it's the will of other coalition forces, and it's the will of the Iraqi people. Just two decades later, the weaponry and technology available for warfare are remarkably more advanced, as is the way the systems are developed. Today, terrorist groups have access to devices that are more sophisticated than what the Pentagon had in 2004. When the U.S. invaded Iraq, drone technology was limited to expensive systems. The Predator drone, for instance, required substantial infrastructure including runways and control stations. What was a marvel then can now be bought off the shelf and modded by cash-strapped, but technically savvy, non-state actors. Just some examples of military tech that's emerged or matured since the Iraq War began. Drones and unmanned systems have matured considerably. Modern drones like the MQ-9 Reaper are capable of both surveillance and strike missions. Laser weapon systems that use directed energy to target and disable small drones and boats. Installed on ships, the laser weapons heat the target until it catches fire or explodes for lower cost per shot advantage than traditional munitions. Advanced body armor that's significantly lighter and stronger thanks to modern materials like ultra-high molecular polyethylene and the integration of artificial intelligence into military systems for functions like predictive maintenance, threat recognition, and decision support. The way defense systems are developed and produced has also evolved dramatically since the Iraq War. During the Bush administration, computer-aided design was the norm but CAD integration with other digital tools was limited. Today, product life cycle management systems integrate design tools seamlessly with manufacturing processes. Modern military ecosystems support digital twins, which are virtual replicas of physical entities that are used for testing, analysis, and maintenance. Enabled by digital engineering, Digital wins are game changers for their real-time monitoring and predictive maintenance applications. Engineers have insights into the current status of equipment like jet engines that were unimaginable 20 years ago. Back then, simulation and training was primarily scenario-based. Today, digital wins of vehicles, aircraft, and even battlefields are used for simulating real-world conditions with just virtual risks. Digital engineering also unlocks virtual and augmented reality applications that are otherworldly compared to the 2000s. The industrial metaverse's growth is outpacing the consumer experience. With aerospace and defense among the early adopters, modern warfare is network-centric, with highly developed integrations across platforms for real-time data sharing. During the Iraq era, network-centric warfare was in its early stages, with steps toward enhanced connectivity and info sharing. And today AI and machine learning have matured to the point where the Pentagon is eager to deepen their integration across domains. So artificial intelligence allows you uh, to absorb massive amounts of complex information very rapidly uh, to assist uh, humans in their decision making. If today's pace of advancement continues, tomorrow's possibilities include fully autonomous systems with land, sea, and air vehicles capable of complex missions without human intervention, revolutionized cryptography, logistics, and sensing capabilities fueled by quantum computing, lighter and stronger protective gear, and more resilient vehicles thanks to advanced materials science. Enhanced use of satellites for communication, surveillance, and maybe even combat in space. Integration of augmented reality and exoskeletons in regular troop deployments. And tighter cyber-physical system integrations for more coordinated and strategic operations across domains. 